look at these awesome black levels. And if you watch Keep It Classy or Tech With KG or other YouTubers, this is the exact kind of content they're going to use to say, man, look at how deep and inky black this is. This is absolutely incredible stuff. Nine times out of ten, they'll have their ISO pretty low when they show these things off. Sometimes they don't because the truth is the TV doesn't really need an aggressive ISO. Like right now, I can go as high as 800. And yeah, there's a little bit of a bloom now that you can see like I see in the real world here. But most of the local dimming algorithm is shut off and working correctly. Now, I got a question asking how come my local dimming doesn't work? Basically, other guys, their local dimming works. It blooms, but it works. So what's the deal with mine? Well, there's nothing wrong with my local dimming. I don't have a defective panel. And we're going to explain this a little bit deeper and maybe a more digestible way. So... Again, think of local dimming like a band-aid or like makeup. You apply it over maybe not a not-so-great foundation to get the result that you want. And that's what they're doing here. This is dark, but again, when it needs to illuminate something that's in a challenging area, it doesn't exactly get it tight to the body of what needs to be illuminated. Therefore, you have a glow, a halo, or a bloom. Now, here's the thing. YouTubers know that this is the type of content that needs to be shown off to make these TVs look beautiful. And I can sit up here all day and say, guys, look at these inky deep black levels. Oh my gosh, I've never seen an LCD look so great. Just look at this. It's perfect. There isn't a single drop of bloom on here. This is amazing stuff. I think you should run out and buy it. And by the way, I so happen to have an affiliate link below. Just click, click that little blue thing. Yeah. Guys, make me money. I could do that very easily. I choose not to. The reason being is because this TV is a downgrade from last year. It is dimmer than last year. It has worse black levels with an IPS screen, which is the first time ever a QN90 series high end had such low contrast picture quality ever. Now, again, if you're watching stuff like this, the local dimming can trick you into thinking that it's amazing. And that's why demos more or less are geared towards this kind of content. But oddly enough, if you want to know what's hilarious, if you watch the store demo in the unboxing video that I did, you can see that not even Samsung is showing content like this because they know that they went IPS this year. Usually when companies stay away from black background demo content pieces, it's because they don't necessarily have good black levels to stand on. Sony is the exception. They don't care either way. They're like, you'll go all letter, you'll get what you get. But with Samsung, they usually try to stay away from that kind of thing. Now, this content aside, <laughs> this doesn't tell you the whole story because, of course, there's more to geometry that can trip up a local dimming uh, algorithm, if you will. Now, why I say this is because, again, as we look, this looks really good. It's really uniform and inky and deep black. If this was the experience most of the time, I probably could recommend it. But again, YouTubers know to use this particular scene in the Spears and Munsell UHD benchmarking disc because it's mostly a bright area on a black background. And when you have mostly a bright area on a black background, that's when the algorithm becomes more aggressive and it dims those things down because it knows to. Now, when we get to more contrasty, challenging geometry pieces like in the real world, that's where you're gonna have some problems. And I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. Now, when you watch their videos, they're going to completely omit the fact and not even tell you that when you're looking at the cityscape, it's completely gray and hazy. It doesn't look great, right? We can play semantics all day, every day, lower our ISO down to maybe something a little bit more aggressive and say, oh yeah, it looks great. You know what? Let's be really aggressive. I'm going to do what some YouTubers would do. Let's go down to like ISO, you know, like 200, 125. Now you can't see a thing. You can't see any detail in the room. Everything is dark. Some YouTubers will sit there and say, look at how inky and jet black this TV is. This is absolutely incredible. Guys, can you believe it? Look at this. It's so amazing. I think I have no conflict of interest, by the way. I'm just a totally normal guy. You should buy from my affiliate links and you should trust every word I'm saying. Look at how amazing and deep black it is. It's wonderful. What they don't tell you is if you, again, just slightly increase the camera's sensitivity to light, you can see all of the haze that creeps up into the black parts of the image here and in here. And if you look for it in their videos and you know where to look, they can't lie anymore. And then the magic is over, right? The game is over. They can't play it with you anymore. And now you know what to look for. So I'm going to show you this scene. This is the Ferris wheel scene that we saw and Keep It Classy's. By the way, there's nothing classy about him because, again, he's lying to you about this stuff by not telling you. The blooming is bad. I, I don't know why it's so hard for people to admit that. 
you can look on his video in this area and in this area and in this area and in this area and you will see the same level of haze you're seeing here and the local dimming will be dark in the same area here. They're playing a dirty game where they don't want to compare apples to apples and get the 55 inch and literally rock the same apples to apples. They want to pretend like, oh, you need to get a 65 inch. Now, for full transparency, the 55 inch is $19.99. Plus tax, you're over $2,100, and you have bad picture quality that you could get on any full array set. The whole point of quantum matrix technology is because it's supposed to be super small and compact, giving you more zones that get you closer to OLED. This is not closer to OLED. This is a joke for $2,100 because you can buy an actual OLED with quantum dots for that price. Hello. Now... That aside, let's talk about what you should look for, okay? As a viewer watching somebody's videos so that they can't BS you, you want to make sure, A, you can see some detail in their room or in their environment, and more importantly, when you do see blooming, you want to look at challenging pieces like this, like where there's a bright area here and then a dark area here, or there's a bright area here and a dark area slightly above and then another bright area here. These are incredibly challenging geometry pieces that trip up local dimming because it doesn't know, I make that bright, then I make that a little dark, and then I, it, it can't. It's limited by the technology, and you're going to start to see it fall apart, especially when it has IPS. Now I know what you must be thinking. Well, Quantum, we're not just sitting here all day looking at test patterns and all this nonsense. We want to see real content. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put up some real content and then let you decide what looks good and what doesn't look good. And we're even going to lower our ISO down a little bit just to be fair and have fun with this whole thing. Here we are on PS5 with Spider-Man Remastered. And if you know like me, when you're in challenging scenes like this that are super immersive storytelling pieces, you're going to want to see it properly. Unfortunately, this particular Samsung doesn't necessarily do it justice, and you end up with a lot of bright spots. And I mean a lot of bright spots. It's almost like a drinking game where you can try to take a shot every time you see haze or bloom on this set. That's how bad it is for the $2,100 plus dollars that you pay. Notice how I said plus there, because it doesn't just stop at $2,100, you're paying even more money than just $21 even after taxes. And that's a problem for just a 55 inch that doesn't really do anything but give you old technology from 2010. Yes, you heard that right, 2010. This is using something called plane to line switching. And in English, it's just a type of IPS panel. Whether it's PLS, ADS, or just straight up IPS, those are all IPS types. And all that means for you is, well, simply put, scenes like this are going to look pretty terrible, as you see right now. Now, if you don't see a problem with this and you're enjoying it and you think it's immersive, then God bless you. Enjoy your TV and just forget I ever said a word because it doesn't apply to you. But if you really do want to get what you're working so hard, I mean, come on. You have $2,100 to spend, and this is how you want to spend it? I don't think anybody truly wants gray-black levels. I don't think anyone truly finds it acceptable. I think what it is is, again, it's much like I say, and I say it as much as I do because it's true. YouTubers are getting put up to saying positive things, whether it's for their own personal gain through their blue affiliate links on every video, or, again, just connections and networking purposes to get favor, invited to places, and so on and so forth. It's annoying as hell, and I mention it because it's something that has gotten TV so bad to the point where we are now paying over $2,100 for a so-called flagship experience that gives us all the bloom and haze in the world. And it, it, it doesn't look great, and it's not a nice feeling, and I just wish this kind of thing would stop being basically a bloom fest, more or less, like we're experiencing here. But I know what you must be thinking. How does it do with TV shows? So I'll put one of those up and show you how that works. So here we are on Hulu with the TV show Undercover Underage. And we're uh, season one, episode four. You can watch this and see what I'm showing you here. And you can kind of see all the hazy awfulness. I can raise up my ISO just a little bit to show you what it looks like on my end. We have some blooming happening there. It's not great. But again, I'll digress from that point because why not? We'll lower down the ISO just a little bit just to be ultra fun with this. Now, the, the, the thing that I want to point your attention to is anytime you're skimming through sliders, which is a very common thing to do on streaming apps, you're going to see this haze. They try to tell you it only matters when you pull up menus as if, by the way, this doesn't look like absolute garbage. If, if that if that was just me being petty, then of course you're going to be bothered by this in a dark room at night trying to enjoy your favorite TV show. 
Also, I mean, I'm just saying it looks like paper mache. You can zoom in or go full screen. The the lack of detail and quality in streaming is disgusting. It just does not look great, right? Now, again, this has nothing to do with my internet connection or anything like that. That's just, at times, this TV just does not perform great. And then, of course, darker scenes, haze everywhere. I mean, look at that right there. That is just not good wrapping around there like that. Um, again, just not my favorite thing. So we're going to let this play out a little bit more through the magic of fast forwarding and show you a bit more. So in a dark room, when you're watching this TV show, you're going to notice that, well, if you're in a like nighttime covert ops type scene like this, lights in the background, gonna bloom the car inside, gonna bloom all that is going to be hazy and gray as you can clearly see right there. This is real content and you can't make this stuff up. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. You have Blooming on the cell phone as well. So as she's texting and doing all her covert ops mission stuff, you can clearly see that this is all gray and hazing and doesn't look good. You can also see a little glow over here, but that's more forgivable, I suppose. But again, the overall scene has some serious issues. Now imagine yourself, if you can, in your home in your favorite booty shorts, okay? You're chilling, you're vibing hard. And next thing you know, you see the image is normal and then it gets hazy and bloomy. That's not what anybody wants, and that's what the Samsung Q90C offers you for the brisk price of $19.99 plus tax. So yeah, it's not great as you can clearly see. Are you barreling through the streets trying to catch that one perp? Too bad, they don't care. Samsung's gonna give you bloom around those street lights. This is what I always talk about, guys. It's so important that we document these kinds of things and know when our local dimming algorithm is going to be a problem and when it is not. Now, you can't necessarily see it because my ISO is not high enough, but also there is a good amount of haze around this sign where the headlights are, or taillights rather, are reflecting off of it. Um, again, not fantastic. So let's do a quick little rundown on what we notice and where. So for starters, if you're watching something like the Spears and Munsell UHD benchmarking disc or a run-of-the-mill generic YouTube video where there's a black background and like honey dripping, you're not going to see what I'm talking about. You've really got to introduce practical lighting and practical lighting just in essence is background lighting. For example, these lights right here that bloom like crazy, tail lights around, again, a horizon wrapping around, these kinds of things because Become problematic it, it just does and then again text and video games when you are trying to skim again as we try to seek and search you're gonna notice that becomes a problem I'm gonna have to open up my ISO a little bit to try to show you a little bit more of the trail there it is now we can finally see the trail at ISO 640 we're gonna lower that back down we'll be nice to them and lower it back down to ISO even 500 because why not we can even go as low as 400 and we'll make a difference even for these practical lights. So we're going to go from 500 to 400 and there you go. You see exactly what I'm talking about. It's still there. Now, if you don't see this, make sure you turn your screen up to the max brightness and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But in essence, the point being, anytime you have small practical lighting in the background, text on the screen, or you're just seeking to try to find something in, in a particular show or movie by fast forwarding, you're going to have problems. It, it just is what it is. And there is no amount of gaslighting or pretending like people need to stop hating on ADS and just respect the name of Samsung that's going to change these things in a dark room. Now, I understand I might have said some things that might have put you off to this product. I genuinely hope that is the idea and the point, because with a historic low contrast ratio like this, where we are now getting IPS for $2,100 plus after taxes, you should be outraged. You should speak with your dollars and just buy an OLED. Hell, buy the LG C2, C3, C1. Don't do this. This is, I mean, really, you'll save money buying an OLED and get a better picture anyway. Why wouldn't you? Well, maybe you're afraid of burning. Enter Hisense and TCL this year. Those are the two manufacturers that have been battling for the top spot in the LED market, and I highly recommend you look at them. We will be investigating if they've delivered again this year, Hisense specifically, since they claim that they are the king of all many LEDs this year. But if this is any indication of what the big three have to offer, I don't think Hisense will have a tough time challenging that claim. Again, we will see later on in the year completely unbiased so keep it locked for that if you have any questions or comments on what you saw make sure you drop down below and let me know what you've seen also if you like this video smack a like on it if you hated everything i've shown and it's just crazy also turn that like into a dislike until the next video i'll see you guys later